Thank you for joining us here online at Kent Christian Center. We are so glad to have you here. If you consider Kent Christian Center your church home and would like to give online, that is available to you. All you have to do is either follow the links down in the description below or head to kentchristiancenter.org. Up in the top right hand corner, you'll see a link that says giving. Once you click the link, follow the directions and you can give both your tithes and offerings online. If you'd like to do so in person, of course you can do that here anytime at the church. Or you can also do so by mail. We also encourage you to follow us on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date of everything that's going on here at KCC. Thank you once again for joining us here and of course we would love to meet you in person real soon. Well, good morning and thank you for joining us here today. Obviously, I'm speaking of online because no one else is here. It's just me in the sanctuary, all alone, practicing safe social distancing. And it is a cool 55 degrees in here currently. And to be honest, I am loving it. <laughs> Hopefully we'll be able to get together real soon. We'll just have to wait and see what happens. But when we do, don't worry, the heat will be back on and it will not be 55 degrees when you're here. Pastor Les asked if I would share this morning and I believe I have something for all of us during this time. We all know that everything is going crazy. You can't find toilet paper, you can't find hand sanitizer, things are getting sold out, but don't worry, things are being restocked obviously, but everybody's making a run on everything because everyone's afraid that it's not gonna be there the next day. And it's every day that we're hearing more news and more information about what's coming out with more restrictions or, or new numbers, all these things that are going on. It is crazy. And I can't remember a time in my life when it was like this. And I'm sure very few of you can as well. And we're trying to do our part and make sure that we're doing the social distancing as a church and make sure that we're keeping everyone as safe as we possibly can. And we appreciate you for your understanding in that and also taking a part in that. But I know each and every day, it's like, what's next? And this pandemic has affected the entire world. It's not just the United States of America. It's not just you, it's not just me, it's not just us here in Kent or in Seattle or the greater area. It's everybody everywhere and, it, and it's crazy. And it's all you hear about nonstop each and every day. I mean, I know myself, I've been watching a lot more press conferences than I ever have in a very long time to keep up to date and stay informed on what's going on. It's a crisis that we are all facing. And today, if I had to put a, a title on this, I would just say a crisis in the midst of a crisis because it seems like everything just piles on top of each other each and every day. And it seems like it's gonna be never ending. And honestly, it's probably sparking quite a bit of fear in all of us, not just those who are out there somewhere else, but maybe even in your home and maybe even in your life. And I think what's great is that we have access to so much information these days. We can pull things up on Google. We can, we can see what's happening on Facebook or Twitter or, or Instagram or Reddit. We can turn on the television and watch as the president addresses the country. News stations have been 24 hours for a very long time, and yet it's not always a good thing. This information that we have just barraging us at each and every moment, it makes it very difficult to figure out what's really going on. The pandemic itself is becoming exacerbated it's being made more extreme than it may even be. I'm not downplaying what's going on whatsoever, and I'm not suggesting that anybody ignore the policies that the government is putting into place at this time, or ignore washing your hands, or keeping safe social distance from one another. That's not what I'm saying whatsoever, but I do believe there's a building fear that's gripping the nation and the world. And I think part of the problem is the information that we have access to. Because yes, we have access to all of our political leaders, whether it be the president or the speaker of the house or the minority leader and all these different people giving sound bites all over the place. And that's great. More so than any other time in history, are we able to hear directly from our representatives? And that's an awesome thing. 
but so often we hear bickering and so often we hear naysaying and so often we hear people that are contradicting one another and stepping on one another for their own political gain. We have to realize that politicians are known to bloviate. <laughs> They're also known to demagogue. And I'm not speaking to one side or the other here. It's not some political battle that's going on. There shouldn't be one that's going on. Unfortunately, there is. And it makes it very difficult to discern exactly what's going on because we have so much divisiveness in this arena. But we have the experts, right? And that's awesome. We get to hear from Dr. Fauci and we get to hear from Dr. Binks each and every day and they're doing an awesome job and they're looking at the numbers, they're trying to compile the data and they're doing all the best that they can. And it's great that we have that access, but there's other scientists who are making other proclamations. Even Dr. Binks got up the other day and said, hey, we need to chill out. The media is pushing out numbers that are extreme. It's fear mongering, it's craziness. So even when, you, when it comes to data, people are interpreting it in different ways and trying to figure out different spins on it. And I don't mean spins in a negative way like they have some nefarious act or nefarious attitude in, the, in them when they're trying to get this done. But I do believe that even science can be biased because everything is colored by who we are and our core beliefs and our core values. And you can even take these numbers and start twisting them to whatever end you might desire. And hopefully when our scientists and our experts are going towards that, they're looking at it with a scientific eye. But even then when we see different numbers coming from different people, once again, it makes it very difficult to understand or figure out who exactly we should be listening to. Case in point, we've been acting on the presuppositions of a study that came out and said it was gonna be really, really, really bad. And do not get me wrong, death for anybody is really, really bad. But when it comes to the actual numbers of how many will be affected and how many will die, the mortality rate that we keep hearing about, it's best that we look at everything in context. And currently, we have new studies coming out that are magnitudes lower than the numbers that were estimated previously. And some of that is due to the fact that we have put stringent protocols into place and that's great. And some of it's due because the math was a little wrong in the first place. I'm not trying to say that one scientist is right and the other is wrong. What I am saying is that there isn't even a, a consensus of agreement. And the reason that is, is because we're lacking in data. We're lacking in testing. We're lacking in figuring out whether or not we can get some tests out to see if people have the antibodies to show whether or not they've had it or not. So our numbers are going to be in constant flux until that takes place. And then we have the media that is disseminating most of this information. However, as we all know, we have our favorite news sites and the ones that we believe and the ones that we hang with because we believe that they are the most unbiased of any other news site that there is. Well, I hate to tell you that I don't care what news site it is, all of them are biased. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I do believe that when you report the news, that it should be truthful regardless of your bias. That isn't always the case. We've seen over this time how the media has taken certain parts of certain stories, taken things out of context, pushed them out to the people, and put up crazy numbers that no science backs up whatsoever over and over again. So, so who do we trust? What channel is right? I don't know. But it is crazy to me that right now there are news stations that are considering not airing our public officials as they get up and give us the information that we need currently. And I truly believe that's because if they realize that people are watching and paying attention to what's going on during those briefings, it's really hard to take things out of context and try to put your own spin on it. I'm sure they probably don't appreciate being called out in the middle of those briefings either for misinformation that they've spread. Regardless of the reason, it makes it very difficult to figure out who you should be listening to when it comes to news consumption as well. Well, what about our peers? We have social media, right? So we have the uh, ability to reach out to friends and family and people that we agree with all over the world to get our news and our information from. 
and people are sharing things left and right. And you have people on Twitter who are throwing up hashtags to get more traction and more attention to whatever it is that they're trying to get people to see. You've got people on Reddit who are putting forth all the news articles, mostly opinion pieces that are coming out recently about all the new information. However, once again, those biases come into place. And this isn't to blame us as people, but it's to understand us as people. We're fallible. We have biases. We're, we're not the author of all of this. We do not know all the answers. I would appreciate it myself a lot more if I heard more of these politicians and the scientists and even the media say, I don't know. Because right now it seems like everybody is a virologist and everyone is an epidemiologist and everyone is an expert on everything. And that's just not the case. Even the experts don't have all the data. They don't know. Currently, we even have religious leaders that are out there promoting that this is the end of days, that this is the ushering in of what we see in the book of Revelation. In my opinion, it's not the case. When we look at the book of Revelation and we look at those plagues that are prophesied to come and we look at how bad things are going to be, as bad as this current situation is, it, it doesn't line up in my opinion. I'm not going to claim that I am an expert, but this is what God has called me to do. And in my opinion, I would say that it's not. So who's right? With so much being said, it can be very hard to figure out who it is that we're supposed to listen to. And that can make it difficult in our daily decisions and the things that we choose to do. And it can also lead to uncertainty and most definitely fear. So am I saying that there is no hope? <laughs> am I saying just deal with it? Just go with it? No. In youth group, we've actually been doing a series on scary stuff. We've been talking about scary things, whether it be things that you're afraid to do, like public speaking or uh, heights, or maybe you're afraid of water, uh, you're afraid of holes. I, I don't know, all these different things that we can be afraid of and how we're supposed to deal with it, how we're supposed to approach fear. I know in my life, one of the weirdest fears I ever had that I can remember from when I was about 13 years old, for some reason, for about two, a two month period, I was just stricken with fear that my family and I were gonna be in a car accident. And I would buckle my seatbelt and I would hold on to my seatbelt and we're driving for about an hour each and every weekend and I'm just thinking, we're gonna die, we're gonna die, we're gonna die, we're gonna die. My mom nor my stepdad were terrible drivers. I don't know why it got into my head. I just had this fear that we were gonna be killed in a car accident. Eventually it subsided, good but it was an irrational fear for whatever reason. But the verse that we're talking about currently says this, cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never let the righteous be shaken. Cast your cares on the Lord and he will sustain you and he will never let the righteous be shaken. It's a very simple instruction that has two parts to it. And we're gonna look at both of those this morning. The first part is casting your cares upon the Lord. I want us to understand what it means to cast our cares upon the Lord. That means that all the fear and worry and the trepidation that you have over any situation, whether it be what's going on right now currently or any other thing that comes up in your life, it means to take those fears and take them to God and set them, lay them in his hands or lay them at his feet and not to pick it up once again. To cast those fears means to give them to the Lord and you're trusting in him to take care of them. You're trusting in him to see you through that. You're trusting in him to help you through that fear and that worry that you have in your life. And it's not like casting a fishing line where you reel it back in. That's not the kind of cast that we're talking about. We're talking about casting them and leaving them and not bringing them back in. Now, this isn't about ignoring your fears. It's not about, oh, here's my fear. I'm just going to blah, 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 blah. Because the Bible doesn't promise here that he's going to make the situation change. 
The Bible doesn't say here that God is going to change the outcome of the current thing that you're going through necessarily, although he might, depending on what it is. But what it's saying is, is to give them to him, but you're still going to be facing that thing. Because if you cast your fears to the Lord this morning and then you go turn on the news tomorrow, it's still going to be about the coronavirus or the next thing. Those things aren't going to go away. It's not about ignoring the situation, but it's about trusting. Trusting in the Lord. Because we're still going to have to make decisions during those situations. We're still going to have to take action during those situations. It doesn't just go away because we're trusting in the Lord. It's not about ignoring the situation. It's about being able to face the situation without fear in our lives, without being gripped with worry. Because I'll tell you, when we make decisions based off, out of fear, when we make decisions based out of worry, we make a lot of bad choices. We, we've seen this in the Bible. You can look all the way through and find tons of people who made some bad decisions because they were worried about one thing or another. They were filled with fear. They had hate or anger in their heart, those kind of things. Those things will color our decision and color our outlook on life. We look at Jonah and his situation and wanting to refuse to go to Nineveh. You look at Jacob running away from the problems that he had caused in his own life. And we look at Saul who was afraid that David was going to upstage him. We can't let fear run our lives. And the first thing we have to do is take that worry and that fear and place it at the feet of God. We have to cast our cares to God. When we do cast our cares to God, we see two promises listed here in Psalm 55 verse 22. The first is that he will sustain us, meaning that he will maintain us and he will keep us balanced during this time. Meaning that when we depend on God, he keeps us maintained. He gives us the strength that we need. He gives us the peace that we need. He gives us the joy that we need, the power that we need. He gives us all that we need to face whatever the situation is. But first we have to give it to him. Once we do, that opens up the door. We see this in Philippians chapter 4, verse 7, a very famous verse that many of us know. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus Christ. As I said, when we cast our cares upon the Lord, the situation may not change, but He guards us and He protects us. And he gives us peace in the midst of that situation. He guards our hearts and our minds. Why? Because our hearts and our minds can get us into so much trouble when we're not relying on that peace that he gives us. That's when we start to make bad decisions. That's when we start to slip back into bad habits. That's when we start to make bad decisions about our family or about our work or about our character for other people to see. But when we cast our cares upon the Lord, he gives us that peace, but he also guards our hearts and our minds, whether it be because of an outbreak or whether it's because of our job situation or our home life or whatever may be going on. He is the calm in our storm. The second promise that we see is that we will not be shaken. And this goes along with that guarding of your hearts and minds that we see in Philippians chapter four, verse seven. We will not be shaken. Meaning that when we cast our cares upon the Lord, He will sustain us, give us all that we need for every situation. But not only that, He doesn't just say, okay, here you go, and that's all you need. No, He sustains us actively once again, giving us more and more as it is needed, providing for us all that we need to not let fear enter back into our hearts, to not let worry come back into our lives. There's no more need for fear and there's nowhere left for fear to grow because that fear, that worry itself is what grows. And when we've given it away, there's nothing left to grow. Fear loves to pop up in the weirdest of times, sometimes for no reason whatsoever, but it's something that we all face and we need to understand that it will be something that we all face. And it's not bad that you have fear pop into your life. If we don't take care of it, that's when it can be an issue. But worry does nothing but make things worse. 
If you go, as we talked about earlier, to Facebook or Reddit or Twitter, any of the social media sites, and you're to look around right now, you're going to see a lot of fear. You're gonna see a lot of worry. You're gonna see a lot of finger pointing and blaming of people and people think, saying we're all gonna die. I got on one of these boards that just started up recently and it's all about coronavirus. And when you go into that site, it's filled with fear. And everyone's saying how we're all going to die and how everyone we know is going to die. And if we even dare to open our doors, we're not doing our part. And how dare you get online? You might give it to someone over the internet. I joke. I know no one's saying that. Hopefully no one's saying that. But I'm saying the feeling that you get when you go into that place is just soaked with fear and worry. And that fear and that worry turns to hate and anger when people think things aren't going the way that they think it should go. And that's when they start attacking one another. This happens all the time. It's all, it all stems from fear. The hate and the anger and the vitriol, it all stems from fear. And I get it because again, we're, we're trying to gather all the information that we can and we're hearing from so many different sources and other people are saying other things that we don't understand and we see the data and there are people dying and there are people that are affected by this. Yes, and we've closed down the economy. And now people are not only worried about their, their loved ones that might be affected by this, but they're also worried about themselves and their loved ones that are gonna be affected by this when they don't have a job to go back to. I get it. And it's a hard thing to balance and we, we, we need to get to a point where we can see how we can balance that. But right now it feels like there's not enough information. It feels like there's too much differing information. But the Lord said worry can't even add a day to a man's life. Jesus himself in Matthew chapter 6, verse 27 says, Can any one of you by worrying add a single day to your life? And the answer is no. Jesus himself is saying here that worry not only can lead to bad impulses and bad decisions that we might make, but it's also just a waste of time. We can't add a day to our life with worry and fear. The only thing it does is lead to bad decisions and also cause our hearts to be filled with strife. All of that being said, once again, to not worry isn't the same as ignoring the issues. That doesn't mean that you can just storm into church or into a movie theater or wherever else that has a whole bunch of people in it and just say, I don't care about any virus. Well, great. Don't have worry about the virus. Don't have fear, but also be wise. That's why we as a church are, are practicing the things that have been put into place currently for the social distancing and everything else. It's, it's wisdom. It's not fear. It's not out of worry. It's wisdom. But we need to have that same practice and approach in our daily lives concerning everything that's going around us. It's not a defiance because we know that God is for us. Awesome, amen, hallelujah, I'm right there with you. But you're still gonna have to face the issues that are before you. You don't just ignore them. You don't make bad mistakes because you're ignoring what's going on. You need to make good decisions based on the wisdom and the peace that God gives you when you cast your worries and your fears to Him. And that's what it's all about. It's, it's so that we continue in our faith and in our walk with the Lord with all that we need for every situation. And he promises that he'll give it. Once again, cast your cares upon the Lord and he will sustain you. Even Jesus, when the devil told him to jump off of a high height because there's no way that God would let him die, surely your angels will come out and save you. He says, you will not test the Lord your God. And we don't need to be doing that either. It boils down to this. While we're here in this situation, trying to figure out who we should be listening to, what advice we should be taking, who's right, who's wrong, all these things, we need to understand that man is flawed. Whether it's the president or the speaker of the house or the minority leader or senators or congressmen or representatives, all over the nation or all the government officials all around the world, they're flawed. They're not perfect and they don't have all the answers. 
our experts and our scientists that are trying to compile all this data and half of the information that they, well, maybe more than half of the information that they are trying to work with doesn't even exist yet. They're making their best guess. They're giving their educated guess, their hypothesis as to what's gonna happen and what's going on. And that's why it continually changes each and every day until we get more and more data. And we'll never have the total data. So you're going to see those numbers change. You're gonna see things going up and down all over the place. And when it comes to the media, the media is gonna be the media. They're the same media they were back before any of this happened. And they'll be the same media that they were after this is all done as well. And even myself, I'm flawed. My hope for us this morning is that we look to the author of all life. We look to the creator of the universe. We look to the God who sent his one and only son to die for us, that we would have salvation and be able to spend eternity with him. My hope is that this morning we would cast our cares and our worries, no matter what anyone else says or does, that we would take our cares and cast them to the Lord this morning and that we would have peace even in these crazy times, that we would have peace even in the midst of this crazy pandemic, this crazy storm that has taken over the world, that we would have the peace that surpasses all understanding and know that from this moment forward, when we cast our cares upon the Lord, God will sustain us and he will not let his righteous be shaken. I want to thank you for joining us, whether it be morning or evening or night, whenever you're watching this. Uh, we appreciate you. And, and church, you regular KCC members, we certainly do miss you. And we hope that soon we will be able to be together once again. But I just want to take a moment to just pray with us all here today or whenever you might be watching this and hope that you will find peace in this storm. God, I just want to thank you so much for this opportunity to come and share your word today. And Although people aren't here, and that we might be watching this some other time, that God, we would realize that your word stands true regardless of whether we're watching this three weeks later or a year later or uh, watching it together on YouTube. I would hope, Lord, my prayer is that each and every one of us would take our worries and our fears and our doubts and just lay them at your feet and not pick them up. We can't come to the altar this morning and join together in prayer, but Lord, we can pray right where we're at. We know that you hear us and that you're with us. And God, I just pray that Lord, you would help us to lay those down. And God, that as we do, that we wouldn't pick them right back up and allow worry to fester in our hearts once again. We wouldn't allow fear a place in our heart any longer, but God, that we would just trust and know Lord that you are in control. And God, that we will lean into that sustaining power that you grant us, Lord God, that we will lean into the fact that you will not let your righteous be shaken. God, we would just trust in you. And I pray for each and every one, Lord, that is currently in a bad, a bad way when it comes to whether this sickness itself or the repercussions that are already taking place with people losing their jobs and and worrying about finances and all those things. I just pray for your provision, Lord God, and your protection. That God, you would do the miraculous. That you would be glorified. Lord, we just give you all the glory and honor and all the praise in your precious and holy name. Amen. As for now, we will see you guys next week at the same place at the same time. However, it might not be myself, but we're going to continue to do the online services and we'll hope that you join us.